Hi, welcome to the prayer closet with Summer White, and it's been a little while since I did a video. We've had Thanksgiving, so I hope you had a really good Thanksgiving. I am stuffed. I just got finished eating leftovers again, and it's 10.30 at night, so <laughs> um, I'm not going to be able to work that off, but I stayed in town the whole day looking at thrift shops, and I um, was really hungry when I got home, so I got to eat all the Thanksgiving leftovers, which we do. I don't know how everyone else is, but okay. If you go to the Honey Baked Ham store and you buy turkey and ham, it's good for seven days. Okay, so I figure if the turkey and ham is good for seven days, then the vegetables and the other stuff must be good for seven days. So I literally eat Thanksgiving leftovers because my mom, between all of us and my mom, we cook a feast. And um, so I just, I like to eat the leftovers. I like the fact that it's already in the fridge. It's already ready. I can just grab it and go. I don't have to like clean up a bunch of stuff because it's already cooked. So I absolutely love like Thanksgiving and Christmas leftovers. And I always eat on them for at least a week and they haven't hurt me yet, which means it's okay. So <laughs> anyways, but I am full of Thanksgiving leftovers and I thought, well, you know, it is 1030 at night, but my husband's asleep. My daughter is staying with someone else tonight and my puppy's asleep. You may hear him snoring in here in just a little while. So I have the living room to myself and I thought, well, let's go ahead and do a video. I want to show you what I got. So I went to three stores today. Um, the first one is the, it's either Warrior Elite or Elite Warrior Thrift Shop. I get the first two words mixed up on it. Um, but I kind of want to just give you an idea. The purpose of this video is to give you an idea of what you can find at the thrift store. Um, and if you like, I will say I'm not very boutique -y. If you like boutique items, you can most definitely find them at the thrift store. I always find them. It's just for whatever reason, not my style, so I pass them up. But I usually tend to go for vintage or something from the 90s that I remember or like florals poofy sweaters. Um, you'll kind of get the gist of it when you see what I picked out. But the first two things I want to show you is from that Elite Warrior thrift shop. And I'm just going to start it off with vintage sweater. And how cool is it? Cats. Okay. I know a lot of you are like, I would not wear that. But the 90s is back in style. The vintage is back in style. Animal print sweaters are back in style. And this one is so cute. So it's got like four different cats on the front of it. I don't know if you can see them all. And then the buttons are also like the crocheted material, the sweater material on the buttons. I thought this was the cutest thing and guess what? It was a whole dollar. One dollar for my cat sweater. So really excited about that. Um, so that's from the first shop and then this scarf and it's just, it's a little, it's one of the, well, I won't say it's little. It's not as small as little ones usually, but it's not a big scarf either. And what I'm going to do with this is tie it either, I'm either going to do like around the neck with something or tie it on a purse or a bag. Um, that's what I'm going to do with it. And it's kind of got that cool 70s vibe to it, which is really in style right now. So, um, so that's what I got at the first shop. And the only reason why I only had two items is because she closed right after I got there. So I look for 30 minutes, I grab these two things and then she kind of kicks me out of the store. So um, I have to go back later. But her clothes are a dollar. Most of them are vintage. You might find like one spot or something. Um, so you just kind of have to dig, but she has a lot of other cool stuff in there too. So a dollar for clothes. I mean, if you can get the spot out, that's not bad at all. Um, and then she's just got like knickknacks and like vintage like just ceramic stuff some different just odd and end type stuff lots of scarves but she's got some really cool stuff in there so i like to go in there and just dig around sometimes um and then the, the next store is second harvest thrift shop which is a church thrift shop and their clothing is a little bit cheaper than goodwill so their blouses and um pretty much most of their blouses are like 249 289 and I got one blazer and it was $5.99, um, but it was like perfect condition, neutral, can wear with a whole lot of stuff. And then their t-shirts are like a dollar or a dollar ninety nine, so really cheap, not not bad on. They have like a everything's half off once a month, although I always seem to miss that day. So anyway, so 
Um, this solid green, I thought this was perfect. It's Worthington, the size eight. And I thought this was perfect for the holidays because, you know, now we're dressing for Christmas, um, Christmas time and, and winter time. And this green, I absolutely love green. I've been saying that's my favorite color right now. It has been for about a year. So my whole life, my favorite color was yellow. It is now green. So we'll see how long it lasts. But um, so far, we're going on a year. <laughs> but I love this grass green. It's a pretty grass green Worthington top. And like I said, it was $2.89. And then I got this Old Navy. It's a large. And I pick up all different sizes. So it might be a small, it might be a medium, it might be a large. That's the three that I kind of rotate in. Um, I found that I can wear them all. It just depends on how I wear them. So whether they're tucked, whether they're tied, whether they're left open, it depends on how I wear them. But I do shop from all three of those sizes and it gives me lots more to look at. So, um, and I've literally spent all day. Well, I got out of the house about 12 and I got home about 6 30 or 7 but that's including going to the grocery stores and I had to go to three different two different ones so it's including that so we can probably subtract like an hour for grocery stores but anywho I spent like five hours in town <laughs> so um okay so this one's old navy size large and it's just kind of a vintage it actually is kind of vintage it's from 2004 um it says holiday so it must have been like Thanksgiving or something but it is kind of a vintagey color. I don't know if this was its original color, but it looks vintage now. And it's got these pretty yellow roses on it. Um, and it's just, I just really liked the yellow rose print on this one and the fact that it did look kind of vintage. So that's one I've got there. And then this thing I thought was super cool. This is, it's Cherokee. I do know this one is vintage. It's, uh, it's from back in the day. I honestly don't even see the Cherokee brand very often, but it is a little zip-up denim vest, and it's got a brown, it feels like velvet or leather um, collar, and then it's also got that same material down here. Um, looks like pockets. It's not an actual pocket, but it's supposed to look like a pocket, and I just thought that was super cute because of the, the style of the collar and the little detail on it. Um, so, yeah got that just plain in the back so super excited about it and then this top right here it looks like a denim top it says BKE vintage and it is got kind of like that stone washed um, stone washed um, design I guess the sleeves roll up and button and this is just perfect to just throw on over um, just like a little t-shirt of some kind like if you have something like a graphic tee or something this would be good to throw on over it and I just thought it was cute so I grabbed it and then this see this is the last one from from Second Harvest Thrift Shop this is that blazer okay so I did pay $5.99 for it it is Travel Smith size 10 and look at this it is the perfect neutral blazer with the pockets of course and I did check they are actual pockets and there's some buttons on the sleeves but I'm actually going to roll the sleeve up I'm going to wear the blazer unbuttoned and use it more for a jacket over stuff but there wasn't a thing wrong with it it is in excellent condition perfect beige tan color and it will go with a whole lot of stuff that one will be able to be paired with different different items okay and then the little goodwill we have two goodwills so i always call the big goodwills the paul huff goodwill and then the little one i always call the little goodwill so which is um oh what street is that i'll think of it in a little while see i don't i know the street but i just always refer to it as the little goodwill i have to think about it um so i can tell you where it's at okay this is Kim Rogers and it is a medium petite and this one was brand new it still had the tag um, it's just this real pretty it's kind of thin very lightweight real pretty 70s kind of brown orange and yellow colors there striped and 
I'm not sure if I'm gonna wear this one right now because it's starting to get cooler. I may keep it and wear it more towards the spring, but I just thought it was pretty. I like the colors on it and um, the fact that it was new and it still had the tags, I thought that was cool. So I went ahead and grabbed it. And so um, the purpose of, well, for me, I just love the Goodwill. I love it. I've loved it for years. Um, once I found out that I could go and I could get all this wonderful stuff for a very low price, I was sold. And I love to dig. So a lot of people, I won't say a lot of people because it's more popular now, but some people don't like to dig through things. So um, like I've taken other people with me for and they're like, oh my goodness, you know, they're ready to go after 30 minutes. I spend a good three hours. Um, so like our Paul Huff store is really big. So it takes three hours if you go down each rack into, and go through item per item per item by item individually. It's going to take a long time to do that, but that's how you find the good stuff. I enjoy that. That's almost like a stress reliever for me. It's fun for me. I enjoy going and looking at all the different prints and patterns and colors and putting stuff together. Um, that's a good day <laughs> for me. So not everybody enjoys that, but hopefully this has given you an idea of some things you can find if you're into vintage or um, just the fact that you can find anything. Like there are so many different brands and all the brands, all the styles are there because, you know, everyone's buying them new and turning them into there. So you're getting all of them at one time. So you're not limited to just Old Navy or just American Eagle or just Liz Claiborne, whatever. You're not limited. You can just, you can look at all of them. You can check out different brands and different styles and you can mix match them and, and whatever you want to do. So that's just a lot of fun for me and I really enjoy it. Plus I've been hearing YouTubers say um, that it keeps stuff out of our landfills, which I had never thought of before, but that is true. So by rebuying stuff, it's not going to the dump. It's not going just to go sit in the dirt somewhere, it's actually being used. So I think that is really cool too. So that's another good reason to go, but I just love it. I absolutely love it. I can go look for hours and hours and I could probably do that every day. Might need one day break in there somewhere, but not very often. I could pretty much shop all day, every day at the Goodwills or thrift shops. So it's just my idea of fun. Um, okay, so this skirt is a sweater skirt and I thought this was so cute so you can see it's a like a baby blue and it has got the detail the texture detail you can see the lines here and then as it goes down here it turns into this blue and white detail towards the bottom so super pretty I just thought this was really neat this is a neat style I haven't really seen anything else like it right now so I thought that might be something kind of different to style up so really pretty it did not have a brand it does say a size 10 but and my sizes are all over the place so if you shop at the goodwill you're not going to stick with one size because of all the different brands you pretty much have to try everything on or already be used to what you're buying to kind of know how things are going to fit i've almost gotten to where i can eyeball things and just know that's going to fit or that's not going to fit because i have shopped there for like nine years, 10 years. I don't know. I can't, I've lost count. It's been so long. So I've gotten to where I can just tell that by looking at it for the most part. Um, but yeah, all brands have all different sizes. So if you're not familiar, make sure you try them on. Um, I know our Goodwills lets you bring things back as long as you bring it back within 24 hours, which is the next day. So, um, moving on, this one is Norton McNaughton and see it says a size 14. I don't wear 14. But it's vintage so back in the day a 14 believe it or not was like our size like six or eight right now so um so you can tell that's not a 14 waist but i thought this skirt was super cute it is a black skirt and it is velour so it's that soft velvety material it's got a little um slit right here at the bottom but i liked it just because it's good to wear to church it's not too short so i don't have to worry about like putting something, you know, I don't have to wear leggings or anything under, and it's thick. I don't have to wear it. Literally, I don't have to wear anything under this. This is perfect the way it is. So that's the reason why I picked it up and thought, well, that'll, that'll be great and easier to wear. And I really like the velour material. I know there for a while that wasn't in style, but now I think pretty much everything is in style. So the more I look at the, the runways and 
different YouTubers and things, everything's in style. It just depends on which one you like. So, um, I, I know in my last, one of my last thrift hauls, I mentioned Tommy Hilfiger, and I am totally stuck on Tommy Hilfiger. I haven't usually been into one specific brand, not in a very, like, not in like years because of where I do shop. The brands don't really matter to me, but I absolutely love Tommy Hilfiger. I am stuck on Tommy Hilfiger right now. That is the brand that I really, really do like. So I have gotten a few Tommy Hilfiger shirts here. I've been picking it up and I had a couple in one of the last hauls I showed you. But this one says Tommy Hilfiger, it says large. Um, I feel like I can make it work though. It is a pink and white plaid or checked little top. It's got the little um, elastic sleeves and the little bows on the sleeves and it's just a button down. So I thought that was really cute. I was looking to see if the logo was on it somewhere, which I don't see at the moment, but it may be there. But anyway, I thought that was cute. So I've got that Tommy and then I've got this Tommy Hilfiger top as a medium and it's a pink and white little polo, but it's like a girly polo. You can see how it's made there with the little V-neck and the pink and white trim and it does have the little um, Tommy logo right there so oh and it's got this pink and white strap down the side too just kind of cool detail so another Tommy Hilfiger and then this one also Tommy Hilfiger size medium is a little black and white polka dot top also got the little logo right there and I thought it was really cute as well so I am really stuck on Tommy Hilfiger Right now, that is kind of the brand that I am looking for. And um, for Christmas, one of my gifts is a pair of Tommy Hilfiger white sneakers. It's got the little Tommy Hilfiger symbol logo on the side of it. So I'll show you those after I unwrap them. But yes, we do pick out our gifts, <laughs> which I'm sure most people do that nowadays just because everybody's so picky nowadays about what they're getting. I don't know. I don't know if most people do that or not. but. Since I do most of the shopping and I take care of everything in town, my husband hates town, literally hates it. Um, it's like he's like panicky ready to go home. So I do all the town, so I usually get to pick my stuff. So I picked Tommy Hilfiger little white sneakers. <laughs> so anyways, um, but I have to wait to show them to you because I'm not allowed to right now. Okay, I got these jeans, and they are Faded Glory. They are vintage, size 8. And they are that kind of washed color from back in the day that I love. And check out the pockets. I thought these pockets were really cute. They're like rutched pockets. They got the little snap on them. There's the front of them. And then, of course, the kind of, it's almost like a... I don't want to say it maybe a flare leg it's either boot cut or flare leg so um i'm always excited when i find a pair of those because those were the thing that was in when i was a little bit younger but the skinny jeans i have warmed up to i do own them now but it took me like a year later to to pick up on that because i really liked my boot cut jeans better <laughs> so but i did like these and so i grabbed them up and let's see, there is one more left. Oh wait, two more. Okay, here we go. Daisies. So I noticed that sunflowers were really in style this year. They were in all the stores and I found this daisy top, which to me is just as good as sunflowers. I thought it was really cute. You can see there it's um, divided. It says by H&M. It's a size six. It's a little button up and it's got the little tie in the front. And the print is just so pretty. So it's a black and white with little white and yellow daisies. I just thought this was really, really cute. So I grabbed it up too. And, and different, you know, the flowery prints, especially the daisy or the sunflower ones. I usually, I've been picking them up before they came back in. So, <laughs> um, okay. And this last one is American Rag. American Rag. And I don't know what the last little... There's like a, a little, it's American rag and whatever this is right here. I don't know what that says. So size large, but I thought it was cute. Um, it's made, it's like a blouse, but it's made like a little jacket with the little buttons in front, which is very different. It's got a button back here in the back as well for design. And then it's got buckles 
on the sleeves. So I just thought that was kind of a cute top, a little floral top. Um, so yeah, so those are some of the things I found at the Goodwill. I have another thrift haul that I'm going to show you as well because um, I picked them up. I picked one up a while back and it's just been sitting there and haven't done anything with it yet. So because of being so busy. So um, I'm going to show you, show you that one next. It's two bags and um, I can never get through a video without the clock going off. So there's my clock. It's playing Christmas music now though because <laughs> we switched it over. <laughs> so um, there's this random music playing in every single video. Um, okay, so anyway, so that is some items that I got at the Goodwill and um, I hope you enjoyed looking at them and maybe you got some inspiration and maybe you want to go shop now. I don't know. So, um, but definitely keep that in mind when you're out and about just, and it doesn't just have to be the Goodwill. So like any thrift shop, I gravitate more towards the Paul Huff Goodwill just because that's what I'm used to and because I find a whole lot of stuff there and usually it takes like a day to look there because the store is so big so if you're just skimming stuff you might not find anything and um you know it won't take that long but you might not find anything um but for me I go in there and I can spend a good three four or five hours because I go through everything to find good stuff so or the stuff I like you could say um, so, so good stuff. It might be good for someone else, but the stuff I like, you know, I dig for that. So anyway, but, um, I did check out the other thrift shops today as well, because I just wanted to kind of see what else was out there and, and just spend some time out looking, um, needed to get out of the house for a little while. And we've actually been clearing on our land. So I know one, one of our videos, I showed the picture of the land and it was like very messy. And so we've been up there two days this week because my husband was on vacation and we've just been clearing, um, clearing the property. So we have a lot of English ivy and it's just covering the ground and I've been pulling it. I've had a workout for two days. <laughs> um, I felt my muscles the next day and then the second day I worked up there, I was good, didn't feel anything. So I guess I got used to it, but um, it's just still a ton of stuff to do, but he was able to burn a little bit of stuff. We can only burn a little bit at a time because like the fire is like right in between the trees and, and it hadn't rained a whole lot, which I'm okay with because I don't care for rain, but I know we need it sometimes. I just don't care for it. So I'm okay with it. We can just take our time and burn a little bit and I can have the sun. <laughs> so anyways, but we've been working on that and, um, yeah, just kind of hanging out and chilling this week since he was on vacation and, had time for a couple of movies and we've been to church, but that's about all we've, we've done this week. Just kind of hung out and ate good food. So anyway, I hope you're all well and I just hope you're having a great Thanksgiving and just a great holiday season right now. I hope everything's doing really well for you. And I am going to read one thing. I'm going to read, um, Psalms 91, which is the chapter for protection. So I thought that would be a good one to read right now just because obvious reasons like the world is crazy. Things are going on. So, um, so we're going to read Psalms 91 of God's Word. And this is the New King James Version. Um, King James is fine if you can understand it. I got the New King James Version because it's easier to understand. Okay. And it says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my, my refuge and my fortress, my God in him I will trust. Surely he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You will not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. And I personalize this when I'm reading it to myself, which is why I'm kind of stumbling over the words a little bit because I'm used to reading it for me. Um, so when, when you're reading to yourself, you can say, it says, surely he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. You can say, surely he, surely God will deliver me from the snare of the fowler and make it personal because it is God's word written to you. So, but I'm reading it to you. So which is why I'm stumbling over it because I'm used to reading it the other way. Um, so, you will not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and, and ten thousand at your right hand, 
That means people. That means if a thousand fall over here, no matter what the situation, if 10,000 fall over here, it says right here, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil will befall you. No plague will come near your dwelling. That's no coronavirus plague. That's a plague. No, any type of plague will come near your dwelling. For God will give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. So in all your ways, that means all your ways of going to church, all your ways of going to school, all your ways of going to Walmart, all your ways, anything that you would be doing if it's in right standing with God, you know, obviously. But in all your ways, just what you go about doing in your daily chores or daily life or activities, it says his angels will keep you. So see, if you know this word, and I, I know I'm pausing here in the middle of it, but there's a scripture that says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. The lack of knowledge that God's people are destroyed from is just not knowing his word. They don't know his word. They don't know Psalms 91. They don't know to claim it. They don't know it belongs to them. So see, to be protected, I'm not saying that God doesn't protect you, but he does protect you. But sometimes when things happen, it's because people don't know this. They don't know that they have this. They don't know that they can go to this and say, oh, I have this. God says right here, no evil will befall me. No plague's going to come near my dwelling. So that's what me and my husband and my family, when it comes to the coronavirus or any other virus, and that's not to say that we don't ever get a symptom, but if a symptom comes up, we instantly tell it to leave. And we go straight to this. And we say, nope, this is what the word says. God said, no evil will befall me. No plague, no coronavirus plague, no any type of plague will come near my dwelling. So this is my dwelling. This is my home. Or in all my ways, wherever I'm going, whatever I'm doing will come near me. So if I'm out in town, I know the scripture. I know it immediately to quote it. I, I remember it and I carry, usually carry the scriptures with me anyway. So I have a Bible in my car, I have a scripture book in my car, I have one in my room. You know, so I always have the word there and available. But I know this to be true. So once you know this to be true and you're out there, and let's say you're going, because one day I went, one day I went, you know, I was going thrifting just like I did today. And I was feeling fine. I got up, did everything I was supposed to do, got ready, took my daughter to school, and I went to the first thrift shop. When I got there, I wasn't feeling so great. I was like, hmm, what is this? You know how that just kind of icky feeling that you get when you're going to get a cold? But, you know, it's just this weird feeling. Like you get, you know, and I started kind of getting that feeling. So I had people talking to me. I was at the thrift shop and I had people talking to me. And I was like, you know what? No. And under my breath, I was like, by Jesus stripes, I'm healed. First Peter 2, 24. I have the mind of Christ. God's not giving me a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. And I started quoting scriptures. I was doing it under my breath. Obviously, I'm not yelling it out in the store, but you can if you want. <laughs> but I was doing it under my breath. But um, I left there, got in my car, went to another shop. I was actually looking. That was the day I was looking for my big stand-up mirror. And so I got to that shop, and um, I felt like if I got out of the car, I was like going to fall. I was like, okay, I don't feel right, you know. And I just had this weird, it was just kind of... Just, I was I was really tired and just kind of felt, ugh. And if I got out of the car, I was like, okay, I'm not, I don't want to fall. But I immediately thought, I got back in my car for a second. Long enough to tell the devil there's a fly in here. So sorry, that's on the video. <laughs> um, okay, we, we don't have a screen door on our back door and we take the dog in and out. So occasional fly gets in from time to time. Um, so anyway, um, I get over there. And I get back in my car and immediately I'm like, no, I know what the word says. I know that no evil will befall me. No plague will come near my dwelling in all my ways. His angels will guard me in all my ways. So I knew I was like, no, his angels are going to guard me in all my ways. And I'm not going home because I'm going to do what I would do if I was healed. And I believed I was healed. And I got back in my car and I rebuked whatever that feeling was. I said, any weird symptoms you get off of me in Jesus name. I will not accept sickness or disease or anything that comes from the devil. I will not accept it. I refuse it. And I refused it. 
and I got back out of my car and I still felt a little funny and I took three, four steps and by the time I got to the door, I was already feeling better. And by the time I went inside, I saw the people that I had gotten the mirror from. Um, you know, I had to go and pick it up at their house, but I had met them and they said, oh, I have a mirror for you because that's what I was there looking for. And um, I had went to get it. Um, so I finished talking to them. I was still kind of, you know, I was feeling better. Wasn't 100% better, but better. And then by the time I walked next door to the other little, it was the little Goodwill that I was going to at that point, it was completely gone. So this was about a three hour period, okay, that I dealt with symptoms. That's why you should never give up. That's why you should, you, when, when you, you read your scriptures, you confess it but you stand on it. You don't stop. You don't say, well, why do I still feel this way? It's easy to do that. Don't do that. You ignore it. Don't, don't ignore it in the sense like, oh, it's not real or it's not there, but don't give it place. Don't confess it. Don't be talking about it and worrying about it. You stick with the word and you say, this is what the word says I have. And that's what I, and I did it for three hours. And you know, I've had to do it longer before, but I did it for three hours. So what could have been bad stopped. The three hours completely gone and it was gradual. It was like, I'm feeling this way. If it worse by the time I got the second place, by the time I got third place, it was gone. So it, it was kind of gradually left, but that's what this word says. The word says that it, God's people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. But I had the knowledge to know to do that. I had the knowledge to know and I don't know it all, believe me. There's like a lot of the Bible that I don't know. But I do know this. I know that healing was provided for us. The Word says it was provided for us. It belongs to us as a Christian. And if I'm a Christian, I'm healed. So I knew to quote these scriptures. And I knew what to do. Now sometimes it's uncomfortable. Sometimes you don't feel like it. Sometimes you're tired. And you have to push through your feelings. You have to push through what is going on in your mind or what is going on in your feelings to be able to do this. But if you will do that and you will get God's word and you will stand on it and you will confess it, it will work. I've, I've seen it work multiple times. I've had it work for me multiple times. Um, and see, a lot of times people don't understand. They don't understand that they can call on God and they can quote his word and they can have healing, but it's you use your faith. To do that it's an act of faith you're you're you tell those symptoms to go and you're standing on what the word says regardless of how you feel so i also rebuke any symptoms that were on me from hurting or bothering anybody else so you know i, I just simply said jesus i just commend or i thank you that every germ is dead and that no germ will transfer from me. No sickness will transfer from me to another person. It is dead in Jesus' name. Um, and I did do that. But by the time I left the last place, I was completely better. There was nothing wrong. I went about the rest of my day. Everything was great. Went by the next day. Everything was great. There was nothing more of it. So you can do that. You can use God's word. Um, when you're a Christian, this belongs to you. If you've accepted Jesus in your heart, healing belongs to you. God wants you to have it. He's provided it, but you have to know it. So don't be destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Um, so anyway, I'm going to finish. Just got off there on that for a second. I'm going to finish the rest of the chapter so you can hear the rest of it. Um, okay, so it says, For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they will bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. The young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. This last part is very important. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. You can have long life. It says right here, with long life, I will satisfy him. But you have to know what it says. You have to know the scripture. You have to claim it. You have to confess it with your mouth out loud. And you have to believe it in your heart. So God's word will not work if you don't believe it. Which is why it's really important to just read it. Read it. 
read it. You can never read it too much. Read it and read it and read it until it's like so built up in you that it's more real than anything else. Just continue reading it. Keep reading it. Keep it with you. But I guess my point today is just make sure you know the word. If you don't, take the word with you and start reading it. Take these scriptures. This was Psalms 91. So if you don't look that up, you want to write it down, you can Google it on your phone because we have that advantage now. But, um, but Psalms 91 is like, I call it the protection chapter. So it's what God is saying he, will, he does for you, how he takes care of you. And so um, that belongs to you. So just remember that as you go out and about. And if you, even if you start to get a headache or something, say, no, uh-uh. I rebuke you, headache, in Jesus' name. I'm not accepting a headache. It didn't come from, nothing bad comes from God. God does not make you sick. I know there's some controversy on that, but God does not make you sick. You can't find it in the word anywhere. He sent Jesus so that we would have life and have it more abundantly. The devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. The devil wants to steal, kill, and destroy you and your family and everything else. That's what his purpose is. And you have to know that. And then you know what belongs to you through Christ. If you have Christ, he's provided healing. He's provided protection. He's provided prosperity. He's provided a lot of things, but you, you have to know it. So that's why it's really important to read the word, get into the word. Um, there are places in the word that I need to read more. There's some that I'm, I think everybody's kind of that way. There's some that you really get and it's like, oh, that makes sense. And it clicks with you. And then there's other areas where you're like, I need to read that more. I just don't get that. I don't, I don't understand. So yeah, there's, that happens to me too. And that happens to everybody where you just have some things you get better than others. Um, so we're all working on it. We're all a work in progress so, and that's okay. But I just want to leave you with that tonight and just say, you can go out there in the world if you know God's word and be at peace because you know that he's protecting you. You know that he's with you and everything's going to be okay and just confess this and believe, believe this in your heart. Believe it to be true and confess it over yourself, over your family. And you'll just, you'll have a better outcome. It'll be good. I mean, me and my husband, we, my family, every now and then we might, and when I say we get a symptom, it is rare. It is rare. Like we do not spend time at the doctor's office. We go to the doctor like once a year, check up. Sometimes <laughs> we do not spend time with the doctor. We're actually paying a lot of money in insurance that we're not using, honestly. Um, but, you know, we know because we've seen it work. We've seen it happen for us. We've seen it happen for other people. We've seen it work. So we know that we confess God's word and God's healing over us and things leave. We know. We know that that's coming from the devil and we can rebuke it and we don't have to accept it. Um, even like my daughter, she had a sore throat. Begin, begin of the school year, you know, when the school starts, all the kids get sore throats and runny noses. I don't know why that is, but we rebuke it. So she came home with a sore throat one day, runny nose, and we're like, no, no, we're not having this. We prayed over her. We rebuked it. Like, it might have been like two days later. She's perfectly fine. Nothing's going on. Everything's good. She doesn't have to miss any days out of school. She doesn't, you know, she's not having to sleep on 10 pillows. She's good. So, Anyway, um, so yeah, just keep that in mind as you go about your day. And just remember, God's plan is to protect you. His plan is to, to help you through your day, not to hurt you. And he wants you well. So remember that for your day. And I will see you on the next video. If you like this, if you um, like this video, if you like the stuff, whatever, if there's anything about this that appeals to you, please hit like and subscribe. And um, I do have my next video is going to be a thrift haul as well. And I hope you have a wonderful day, and I will see you on that next thrift haul. Bye.